should the Philadelphia Eagles fire Nick Sirianni? And here's my plea. Um, I think Nick Sirianni was a good, not great hire. I think when you look at Nick Sirianni and you look at how the Eagles got run last night, how are you, the owner of the Philadelphia Eagles, who's a really good owner in my opinion, spends money, is aggressive in the, the personnel markets, how are you looking at the way that your team defended last night? How are you looking at the way that they just didn't tackle last night? How are you looking at the way that the wide receivers ran routes uninspired without a care in the world for what was happening at the line of scrimmage? Uninspired football. How are you going to make the case that you should keep this head coach? How are you going to make that case when Bill Belichick is just chilling in the cut? Interviewing for jobs, I don't know, like the Atlanta Falcons where he interviewed. You could have Bill Belichick as your head coach. And you're going to stick with Nick Sirianni. I think that's a terrible decision. Because you don't recover from the loss that they had the last six weeks. And certainly not the loss they had last night with the same group of dudes. And Nick Sirianni has no intention of turning that roster over. Now, is it going to turn itself over? It is. They have a massive amount of free agency. Jason Kelsey uh, reportedly told his teammates he's retiring last night. A leadership change is coming. Make it a clean sweep. Jake, I think there's no doubt that the Philadelphia Eagles should clean house and Nick Sirianni should be part of that. Absolutely. I, I, I think that you can't, you just can't get past what happened last night. And I really feel like the final dagger wasn't even last night. I think the final dagger was the A.J. Brown injury. After after that, you could see the life come out of this team. And honestly, like I, I have to agree, it didn't look like they believed they could win that game last night. Whether it was the wide receivers and their lack of effort or or getting beat on the tush-push play. like like There are a lot of things from last night where you're like, yeah, this team was uninspired. Hey, maybe... You know, maybe a reset this season of, you know, some free agency. Obviously, you're keeping Jalen Hurts, but like, you know, just kind of resetting the team, getting a new voice, you know, getting energy back into the organization. Maybe that's all you need. Maybe you're in a good enough spot that that's all you need. But what I'm saying is that when your Hall of Fame center retires and A.J. Brown's got a knee right now and you have a lot of free agency happening, this team's going to be different next year, whether you like it or not. So while it's going to be different, why don't we just go ahead and make the change that's needed? Because if you keep this guy for another two years, or let's just say you let him finish out the deal, right? He, hey, he finishes his final year, then we move on from him. That's still a year too late because at that point, where's the league going to be? Is Bill Belichick going to be in a better situation beating you on the football field? Like what would happen if another organization hired Bill, you see them in the playoffs and, and you lose with Nick Sirianni? How are you going to feel? You really tell me Bill Belichick's not interested in the Philly job? Everybody's interested in the Philly job. It's the Philadelphia Eagles. It's one of the best organizations in the league. So to me, I think this is pretty, pretty clear. This is much clearer than, let's say, Dallas's situation or anyone else you want to look at. This, to me, is take your emotions out of it, make the move, reset the organization, and go right back to the playoffs next year. And if you do that... You're going to be thanking yourself when you look back and you say, hey, yeah, after that loss, we said, hey, Nick, really appreciate all your effort. You did an awesome job for this organization, but we're going to have to move on because that's the league. Coaches get hired to get fired. It's that simple. Whether it takes 24 years or five years, eventually you're getting fired as a head coach. So that's why I say I would make the move. It's not that hard. Yeah, I think Sirianni's got to go. I think when you have the caliber of coaches that are available now, I mean, even if it's not Belichick, I, I think when you look at this, the idea of a guy like a Ben Johnson from Detroit, I don't know how you don't make that phone call. I mean, I, I, is that a step back from Sirianni? Probably, but you cannot go any further down the black hole with Nick Sirianni, in my opinion. And I think when when you look at the way that teams have failed after losing the Super Bowl, it's very difficult to overcome that. And the Philadelphia Eagles have too much talent to be this bad. They have You have an MVP caliber quarterback. I think you have all pro caliber wide receivers. I think your defense, you spent money, you drafted. You, like you have all of these options. 
and it simply did not come to fruition. And you have guys like Brandon Graham who wants to be back. You have guys who want to be there and want to fight for the city and want to go back to a Super Bowl. You got to capitalize on that. And I think it is very difficult whether you are Bill Callahan in the Raiders or Jimmy Johnson in the Dallas Cowboys who fired coaches after Super Bowls. You've got to make difficult decisions when you're the owner of a team. And, and, and it just does not matter to me um, that Nick Sirianni is a guy that went to the Super Bowl last year. I don't care. It's not what you did last year because at that point, it's two seasons removed. I want to know what you're doing right now. I want to know what my locker room says you're doing. I want to know what my eyes tell me you're doing on the field. And none of it's good in Philadelphia. Thanks. Not a not a single bit of it is good in Philadelphia. And, and I think it's it's a very tough hill to climb to keep guys engaged when you lose the way they lost. They were disinterested last night. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. And I love Baker and I love his story. And I, that defense in Tampa is very good. You're not that you, you, the Philadelphia Eagles in Poughkeepsie, New York, or the Bahamas or Tampa Bay are better than the Buccaneers on every field. And I think the other damning thing for Nick Sirianni is that the Cowboys got run out of the playoffs and you still look uninspired. And I understand that, Hey, like, you know, the Cowboys maybe aren't like, you know, the end all be all of how you look at football. But if I'm looking at that division, I'm sitting here saying, Hey man, like, like the expectation for Philly is to win that division. Like that's the, every, that's, yeah. every that's year the standard, bro. And, and so you look at this season and it's like, okay, you get to, you get to the, you get the division, you get to the playoffs, everything's good. And then that performance last night, I, I don't know how else to describe it from a player perspective other than you didn't believe you could win that game. And I can only think you didn't believe you could win that game because AJ Brown's hurt and you don't have the firepower and you just, you just didn't, it just looked like you weren't wanting to play. That's just, I, I can't get away from that. And I think that the best example in comparison to what happened in Philly is what almost happened to Buffalo, because I think that blocked field goal, that was really close to disaster for Buffalo. And you had a Pittsburgh defense that didn't want to be there and didn't want to play. And that blocked field goal changed everything. And, to the point we were making earlier, if Josh Allen continues to turnovers, like you have an interim offensive coordinator there, like you have a defensive head coach. And my, my point and the reason I bring up the bills is if they lose that game, Sean McDermott's probably out of a job. Mm -hmm. And that's how it should be because you have a, a generational quarterback in Josh Allen. That's not developing. You have a generational quarterback in Jalen Hurts who's not developing. I think, to your point, Jalen Hurts is progressing. Yes. I, I, I think it's it's worse than Josh Allen. Josh Allen, I agree, is stagnated, although his stagnation is at a high enough level where you're still you know contending for the AFC Championship uh, most years under him, and you've won the division four years in a row now, I think it is. Uh, Jalen Hurts is going backwards, and I can only think, again, it's because they don't believe they can win a ball game. Yeah. I don't even disagree with that. Uh, Jeff Woodworth, Tanner, it was the heat of the moment telling me where my heart went. The heat of the moment. Uh, Monty, with all due respect, you guys are being prisoners of the moment. With all due respect. Prisoners of the moment? So you think I want to fire Nick Sirianni because of what happened last night? No, I want to fire Nick Sirianni because it's the culmination of last night was the culmination of really bad offense, really bad schematics, really bad play calling, in my opinion. Um, I think you had a a lack of morale and want to last night. I'm not a prisoner of the moment. That's not how the NFL works. You don't fire Mike McCarthy, in my opinion, unless you can get Bill Belichick. You don't fire Mike McCarthy. That would be a prisoner of the moment. Nick Sirianni is not a good NFL head coach right now. And the Philadelphia Eagles have the talent to win the NFC. And yet they're not even going to get a chance to play for it because he's unimaginative. He's a weirdo. He is like, he's just, he's just not that guy. He's not that guy. And as a Philadelphia Eagle fan, as usual, you want it both ways. You want to cry, bitch and moan. And then you're like, well, we're not going to fire this guy. Okay. You only are doing that so that you can be in misery next season as well. You understand. I just want to point this out. Drives me crazy. This isn't my opinion. This is what the record states if you look at their schedule week by week. You were a 500 football team in the last 12 weeks of the season. You get that, right? Like wild. Like, yeah, sure. Okay, you won five in a row. Yeah. 
Oh, that's right. Then you lost five of six to end the year, which makes you, that's right, a 500 football team the last 12. You understand that this season, team, bro. this team, 100% disintegrated. Absolutely disintegrated. Like, it's not like they went out and lost by one point the way the Rams did, I mean, right? And fought to the death. Dude, this, the, yeah, I think he got embarrassed. I think the Philadelphia Eagles got embarrassed. Um, let's see. Ooh, look at that. Uh, Jim Bagley, a new member of the show. Okay. Let's go. Um, let's see. The Buffalo Hunter, a member for eight months. Appreciate you, bro. Thoughts on Dorian Singer. Wit is cooking. Dorian Singer is an average-ass receiver who bounces around. <laughs> okay, you asked. Dorian Singer from USC to Arizona, Arizona to USC to uh, – he's, he's just a guy. And I will continue to say about Wit being on fire, you're not on fire at quarterback because you have no idea what you have going into next year at quarterback. Oh, well, I can't. Can he stay healthy? I don't know either. It, it, you, you have got to recruit and develop quarterbacks at a very high level right now. That's your ticket to winning the Big 12. Because the quarterback play is getting better and better. Did anybody see that Isaiah Bond went to Texas? He left Alabama and went to Texas. No, but Sark can't recruit. And why did he Sark go to Texas? Recruit. Did you guys see the video? He posted a video of himself uh, in a Lamborghini. Where's the youth that's in a Lamborghini? Where's the youth coming from Alabama to Texas? Dorian Singer is not special. He's not. And he may well come in. He better not be your best receiver. Because if Dorian Singer comes in and he's your best receiver, you're in trouble at Utah. You're not talented enough. With all exactly due respect. With all due respect. You don't play at three colleges in three years and think that you're all of a sudden some amazing cat. With all due respect. Doesn't work that way. Uh, Aaron Wilson, gifted a Monty Show membership. And he sent me a Thank you. Sorry, sorry. Uh, Sean Rollins gifted five Monty Show memberships. Let's go. Pick them up. Let's go. Pick them up. Pick them up. Appreciate all of you guys. Um, and one other point, because I know so many of you said I didn't know what I was talking about. Did anybody notice uh, who uh, is going to the NFL draft today? Uh, Talia Tagovailoa. <laughs> Tagovailoa. Um, which no, I'm not going to do. That. We're not talking about Pat McAfee, <laughs> who called him Tyloa Tagavayungo Olo. Uh, Talia Tungavailoa was denied a sixth year of eligibility. So for everybody who was like, "You're stupid, Monty. You don't know what you're talking about." <clears throat> you lose all credibility. Trust me, bro. Sources. Yeah, he was never going to get a waiver for a sixth year. So he he is going to the NFL. Uh, let's keep talking about the, uh, Philadelphia Eagles, Ron Nolan, Brian Johnson will be walking the plank. Well, and probably deservedly so because it just got later as it got later, they got worse. Yeah. Um, got it. Got to get to class. Check in later. Nick deserves another year. He doesn't, he has done nothing to earn another year in Philadelphia. Tanner going to class awfully convenient here, bud. Nothing has he done to earn another year. Uh, James, I wish I could take credit for that idea. Zaxby's sells when it's delicious. Hi, this is James. Welcome back. We're having a ranch versus blue cheese argument. Yay. Stop. Uh, Boston Mapes, they were 10 and one. They melted down Chernobyl style. It's the head coach's <laughs> job to keep that from happening. I'm telling you, it's true. Uh, OG Gary, Eric, because people like to throw up flavored cheese and they want, what that uh, no nobody wants flavored Bro, cheese like what oh what are you, you talking guys, about if, if we we're doing? if we're truly talking about zaxby's being a place for wings i'm sad for your life <laughs> zaxby's is not a place you go for wings it, it it's not a place you go for wings it, it's just not in any way shape or form yeah you know it's just it is what it is did mrs monty pick up a free monty show membership <laughs> is that is that what <laughs> <laughs> she strikes again she did she was gifted a membership by 
Because By it's Sean all Rollins. part of the plan. As was Tim Cox. Oh, look, Jim Choi, Mark Hales, and uh, Keith Carl. All Carl. gifted memberships by Sean. You know, I guess she deserves one. You know, it, it, it is what it is. Sean Rollins says, I got you, Mrs. Monty. The eye patch. Utah has no wide receivers, so they will take what they can get. We know as Ute fans that Keithy will lead the team in receiving yards. He's got to stay healthy. Yeah. But he, why I, does he why is he always hurt though? And this is what I feel like well, Utah won't embrace. Why does Brant Keithy take a beating every week until he can't play anymore? Oh, that's right, because he's your workhorse because you don't have anybody yes, else. Exactly right. Tanner like, Plummer on. on Nick Sirianni. One collapse doesn't wipe away all the good things he has done. <laughs> <laughs> Did you watch the game last night? They quit. They quit. That team quit last night. And Nick Sirianni, I, I I look at I look at his his resume, and we were looking at this before the show. <coughs> and listen, I I think he's just an odd dude. He's hard to play for. There's no doubt about that, right? But let's not kid ourselves that this guy is somehow generational. He's 34 and 17 as the head coach of the the Philadelphia Eagles, Mm -hmm. right? And I would also remind you, he's below 500 in the postseason. So are are we really, are we really like, I mean, the guy has lost two out of three years in the wild card game and he had the run to the Super Bowl. It's not like this guy is the second coming of of anything. Like you're just, you're not, you're not. I, I, Philly, I, I, I get it. You, you guys don't look at things in detail. I get it. You're fanatics. You look at things on emotion. Check the record. He's lost two of three years. And do you know who he lost to in both wild card games? Well, you do now. It's Tampa. And the the argument on Twitter last night was, well, you know, he he lost to a dynasty. Kansas City is not a dynasty. Kansas City's not a dynasty at that point. And I I just, I go back and I continue to say he had one good year and two really mediocre years. And the way this year ended has torpedoed their ability to build going forward. You have no ability to say that he is a guy that you, if you cannot trust Nick Sirianni to rebuild this team, he should not be here. Because you're going to completely rebuild this team. With their free agency and your cap situation, you're going to completely rebuild this team. Thanks. You have an owner and a general manager who have provided you talent, and you completely tanked it. So his shit worked for one year. And this year, it, it he ran out. The wick is gone. Yeah. The candle's burned. You got to make a change. Period. Uh, shout a... How Colorado going to be hood next with all the coaches leaving to different places? Oh, oh I, I think that he, that Deion Sanders, when you, I think you're talking about Deion Sanders. Uh, when you look at the Colorado coaching staff, I don't think he's had foundational changes on that, on that coaching staff. I, I truly, I do not believe that. Like if you look at, and I'll pull it up just to make sure. Um, but you look at his coaches, his core of coaches are there. And I think when you look at, um, you know, guys like Gary Harrell, Charles Kelly, Sean Lewis, I think Sean Lewis and Deion Sanders had a, a, a fundamental change of opinion. And that had to, you had to make changes. You had to make changes. And I think when you look at, uh, Pat Shermer, it was absolutely the right move to make. It was the right move to make. You cannot continue to let Shador Sanders get his ass kicked the way he did. Yeah, uh, there's just no way. There's no way to 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 spin that. But Gary Harrell, Andre Hart, Kevin Mathis, they're all coming back. Um, I, I, the the core of that coaching staff is unchanged. And will be unchanged and should be unchanged. Um, and I think when you look at, um, I think when you look at the the differences with certain guys, Charles Kelly is the only guy um, that you 
that I think you're probably, because that's a long-term guy. But you look at Pat Shermer, officially the offensive coordinator, I, I just don't think you're taking a huge step back. Yeah, and by the way, you better hope that Dion doesn't win. Because if he does win, you're going to hear about it a lot. Well, it's and, what he said at Oregon. Get me now. Yeah. Because I think that's as bad as they're going to be. And I, I just don't think that, I, in my opinion, I just don't think he's had massive change in the foundation of his program. His program is unchanged. Um, but if Ed Reed winds up as the defensive coordinator at Colorado or Mike Zimmer or, Man. I mean, there's been a lot of talk about Rex Ryan going to Colorado to be the defensive coordinator. I mean, he's not swinging for Nick Sirianni, right? I mean, that's just not what he's doing. So, but it is what it is. James uh, gives us $2. Oh, God. Stop. Andy Reid's a better man than you are. Nobody is questioning Andy Reid. Nobody is <laughs> questioning Andy Reid. Uh, Kurt <laughs> Myers, who the hell did a geek uh, become a coach of Miami? You you mean... You mean how the Mario hell? Mario Cristobal? <clears throat> or are you like... I think he's talking about uh, Mike. Oh, well, because he's a phenomenal personality. And he's a brilliant offensive mind. Hey, he just is. Uh, like, if you look at the if you look at the way that Mike McDaniel came up, and this is my point about Nick Sirianni. Mike McDaniel bi is building a program. You're moving in the right direction. Like, let's have the Tua Tunga Vailoa conversation. Need to have it. He's playing next year on a fifth-year option. Do you give him a contract extension? I don't think you do. Well, I think, you know, uh, right now, I don't think you do. I agree. I, I, I think the bright spots for two of this year were, hey, he was able to stay healthy. I, I, I could be wrong. I think he played in every game for them. I believe he played in every game for them. So, so obviously, you know, learning how to fall, alleviating the concussion issues, huge step forward. Tua is a very talented quarterback. I don't know that he's capable of winning a Super Bowl, though. I don't know that he's got the goods to lead a team on the road in bad conditions in the cold to win a ball game. I'm not sure that he's that guy. The only question is, in Miami, what's your benchmark? I mean, are you truly trying to be Super Bowl good, or are you cool with, hey, we're going to give to a, let's call it, a three-year extension with an option after the second year. And we want to be, you know, NFC or, uh, yeah, NFC, uh, uh, we want to be like in the championship round. We want to be divisional championship. We want to be somewhere like that with them. I, I mean, I, I think that's the logic. I don't think Tua Tonga Vailoa wins you an AFC championship. Yeah. Or AFC. I said NFC. You did AFC. say NFC. AFC. I mean, you it's know, fine. The Wolves yeah. play in the East. But my I point is for Miami, you're better than you were. Like you've improved, like you're in a good place. Like two is not hurt constantly. Like the AFC is largely a two team conference, a three team conference at most, right? Kansas city, Buffalo, Baltimore. Those are the three guys. Those are the three dudes. So is Tua as good as, you know, any of those guys? No, probably not. He's probably below all three, but he is good enough to take your franchise into the playoffs. Clearly they showed that this year. So next year, the benchmark is, yeah, you got to go out and win a playoff game. And what did I say right after that game? I said, hey, your your path through the playoffs, if Tua is going to be your franchise guy, has to be through either your home field in Florida or through warm weather, which typically the only way to guarantee that, obviously, is going to be by having home field advantage. Well, how do you do that? Well, you got to beat the big boys. They didn't do that this year. So that's why I say, I probably right now I'm not giving to an extension, but again, where are you going to go for a quarterback? Cause again, you, you're not going to run a, uh, an experiment on, you know, Joe Flacco. Should they, you know, make him a free agent? You're not going to go out and find some random dude after you just went to the playoffs with this guy that's supposed to be your franchise quarterback. So when you say things like, Hey, how the hell is there a nerd, you know, being the head coach in Miami, well, that nerd just took them to the playoffs in the AFC. So that's why I say I don't think it's – I don't think Mike McDaniel's done a bad job. I think the guy is new. He's young. He's innovative. He's creative. Love his energy. Love the off-whites on the sideline. 
The only question is, are they ever going to figure out how to run the ball? And are they ever going to figure out how to play defense? Because until you do that, you're not beating anybody of note. You're not going to the Super Bowl. And again, the question still remains, is to a Super Bowl caliber quarterback? And I don't think he is. I don't think he's got that quality. Can you not just finish the thought first before we go into bathroom <laughs> issues? Tua is not, in my opinion, yet a Super Bowl caliber quarterback. And I think that if you look at Mike McDaniels or Mike McDaniel, the thing he's done is he's built an offense that is prolific. And I think the biggest question is, will they upgrade their defense and stay healthy? If they do that, you owe it to that team to have a quarterback that, that you can believe in. And I, I don't believe that Tua was up for the moment. That's just my opinion. Stop talking to me in the bathroom. <laughs> it's so Who fun. talked to you? This homie. Like, we're just... <laughs> so there, there, there is a lobby outside of our, our office where right. people sit and they watch this. Hey, guys. I walk out. I go to the bathroom. I'm, I'm like fully partaking in Tinkle Town, <laughs> right? And this guy's like, hey, what's, what, what are you guys talking about in there? I'm like, oh, yeah, we're just doing a talk show. And it just, <laughs> like, and honestly, I must have 10 gallons inside, right? Because it just keeps on rolling. Oh, wow. Well, that's, you know, I always wanted to do a podcast uh, and, and just going on about podca podcast difficult to do. Hey, bud. I'm like, <laughs> so then I'm finished and I'm like, no, it's easy. And I'm like zipping up and I walk over to the sink and he's like, you know, like, do a lot of people listen to your show? I'm like, hey, man, I got to run. Okay, great. Thanks. Like, sure. <laughs> It's in my hand. Don't talk to me when it's, it's in my hand. Holden Middick. It's in my hand. Stop talking to me. Like, just you stay over there. Right? <laughs> Please. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, All right. Uh, uh, would you extend to a tongue of Iloa? Not right now. You would not. No, okay. Not right now. Uh, Boyd Lake, you need to create a segment called the Four Normans uh, of the Monty Show. Okay. Uh, Ron Nolan, your radar says that they will win. What? Okay. Um, Marley Nuggs, go blue. What's up, Marley? Good to see you. Boston Mapes, Kyle Shanahan tree is awesome. It is. Boyd Lake, potty break. Yes. Uh, James says, Tua needs to be a Super Bowl caliber quarterback. Miami has to make the defense better. Their defense before they got hurt was fantastic. That, I mean, like, I think they had 87 defensive ends go down this year. It's a wee fence. Like, it was unbelievable. Their D line and and edge rushers were decimated. Even uh, Van Ginkle then went down. But I mean, you had all these dudes that got hurt. Like I, I I think that they are in a very good spot. Is it possible that they could ride the D? I mean, you know, <laughs> that bite is never going to live down. Nope, never going to live down. Nope. And I think the the impressive part about Miami is that they did not fold down the stretch like they had historically. And to finish 11 and six, sixth in the AFC behind Cleveland, that was upstart Kansas city, Buffalo and Baltimore, I think is very good. And the unfortunate part is that roster. Uh, I just, I don't know how you explain how their defense fell apart, because if you look at guys like even, even, um, you know, Bradley Chubb, um, I, I mean, Andrew Van Kinkle, Jalen Phillips having an unbelievable year and then tears his Achilles tendon. Like, how do you explain that? Um, and Xavier Howard and Javon Holland and like all these guys limping around injured. But then you look at guys like Christian Wilkins and you look at Zach Seiler, like fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Their defensive line is, I, I think Christian Wilkins is one of the most underappreciated players in the country. And it, I think it's, I think it is absolutely their defense is not their biggest problem. Mm -hmm. I think, I think they are going to have to figure out how to keep Tua upright. Yeah. That I would invest in offensive line. Cam Harrison. What's up, Cam? Good to see you. He says, shout out to Mo Bamba. Shout out to Mo Bamba. Just to Mo Bamba. Oh, look at you. Paul. You have what? 700 drops. Yes. 21 pages now. That is a great pull. Of four by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So 21 times 32. 
21. Uh, 672. Right. I, you know. Um, ooh, a little Adam Schefter bomb. Chargers interviewed uh, uh, Terrence Gray today from Buffalo, their player personnel director, to be their general manager. So now we're starting to see uh, that the LA Chargers are interviewing people to be their, their front office personnel, their that's a very he's a guy that is he's a guy that is very well thought of, Terrence Gray. And I am curious, I am curious if he if he fits the mold. Um, obviously he's a minority candidate, but he is a he is a very, very, very good personnel man. I thought he would get the Raider job. Um Las Vegas would like to speak to him as well. Um and I, but again, they're also, Adam Peters was absolutely thievery for Washington. How the commanders got Adam Peters from San Francisco, no uh, I'll never understand it. I think Ed Dodds and I, I think certainly Terrence Gray are two of the better ones out there, but that'll be interesting to see. Are we just Rooney ruling or are we, and I'm not trying to be a jerk about Keep it. Keep it real. Right. I'm not trying to be a jerk about it, but it, it is very interesting to me that we're in a situation where you just don't know. You just don't know what's real and what's not. Mm -hmm. And that for my money anyway, that's going to be a very, very interesting question is to um, see how long Terrence Gray stays in Buffalo, because I actually think he's going to be one of those guys that's going to be a superstar in somebody's front office. Yeah. So that that is uh, that's a big one. Boyd Lake. Uh, some guys get stage fright when guys talk in the John. I hate it. I don't like it at all. Wasa, whoa, comment dump. Jeff Woodworth, if you speak in the bathroom, you better watch your splash. That's how uh, <coughs> wars get started. Seriously. Are you, do you, do you use the back of the urinal or do you use a splash pad? Splash pad. Yeah, I'm a splash pad. Yeah. Guy. Back of the urinal is too messy, bro. Yeah. I have high end shoes. Yeah. Uh, Wasikowski. Sometimes it pays to be an introvert. Go to the stall. Nah, bro. Waves in opposition. I don't like peeing in a stall. Nah, it's too loud, bro. I'm not a, I don't even care about that. It's just, it, I'm not a pee in a stall guy. Uh huh. I'm not. Um, but it is what it is. It, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, oh, wow. Corey Raymond back to LSU. Boy, he, bros, Brian Kelly's building at LSU. Hey, guys. I, it, you should be frightened. You should be frightened because he is going to be um, – He LSU is going to be good. Yeah. He is going to be – He they, they are building. And I think that is – like I look at what um, Ohio State's done this, this offseason already uh, with Ross Bjork and – you know, and making him their athletic director, you're never filling those shoes. Let's let's just be honest about it. Um, but you look at you look at his resume, um, you know, with Old Miss and Texas A&M, and now Ohio State, or excuse me, the Ohio State. Uh -huh. um, you understand that these brands are the brands that they are because they fire Nick Sirianni. Yeah. They're the brands that they are because when you when you lose one of the most tenured executives in all of sports, you go and you get a really, really good, really good in Ross Bjork, a really good administrator, really well thought of. Um, I mean, he uh, he at one point, I think, was the youngest athletic director in the in college athletics. I love the hire. I do. So it's going to be very interesting to see. But I, I'm warning you now, LSU and Brian Kelly and that football team, they are building. They are, they are, I think everybody sees Saban retiring as an opportunity. Certainly. And I think it is. And I think Lane Kiffin trolling people and I think Brian Kelly hiring people. And it's going to be very interesting to see exactly how all of this how all of this plays out in the SEC, but LSU is absolutely banging. Yeah. Absolutely banging. The Monty Show presented by The Advocates, theadvocates.com, the best injury attorneys in the business at The Advocates. And, and again, you guys, with what, what are we, January 16th? 
Um, I think it is 17 degrees outside right now in uh, Salt Lake City. Bro, are you? Is that a joke? Are you being serious? No, I'm. Uh, I'm. I'm being the the low tonight is 23. Um, 21. And it just depends on how you look at it, but 33 outside. Excuse me. So we are just above uh, freezing in Salt Lake City. There's going to be accidents, car accidents, bicycle accidents, slips and falls. Uh, last winter, we saw amazing people riding through snowstorms on bicycles, right? Like crazy things happen. You have to be ready. You have to be ready when you get in a car accident, when you get hurt at work, when you slip and fall. You got to say to yourself, man, I got to call the advocates. Have it in your mind. If you've been in an accident, if you got hurt at work, zero cost to talk to an attorney, zero. You're never going to reach into your pocket to work with the advocates. Chat with an attorney right now, live online, theadvocates.com, no matter where you are, theadvocates.com. Chat with an attorney. There's a button right in the middle of the page, and it won't cost you a dime. The best in the business are great partners at The Advocates, theadvocates.com. 